Hey guys, um, so welcome to this new um, MicroBit uh, live session. So basically what I want to do today is I want to talk a little bit about this um, brand new MicroBit um, online STEM education course that I've created. And of course, you know, um, it's not just going to be a beginner's level course. Um, on Sunday itself, I will also be streaming live a an intermediate course, right? An intermediate course for uh, learning programming with MicroBit, right? So um, on Sunday itself, um, you know, it's meant for people that already know some things about MicroBit itself, and uh, or maybe they're you're from programming background and you know you, you are interested in learning about MicroBit and seeing what you can do, and that is what the course is going to be about on Sunday. Right, so for today, it's really meant for people, you know, children and, and teenagers that are absolutely new. Anybody that is absolutely new to MicroBit, maybe you haven't done any programming before, you absolutely have not played with electronics before, and maybe MicroBit is your, your very first introduction into electronics, the world of electronics, as well as robotics, all right? So, um, yeah, basically in this video, in this session, um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be sharing with you some of the basic concepts and ideas of the microbit itself. I'm going to go down to the very basic stuff. I'm going to start from the very beginning. All right, so um, this is also to benefit um, those of you who are actually watching this session um, after the live session is over. So you can actually learn and pick up things that, um, that you couldn't have if you weren't able to watch one. All right? So, um, yeah, I just want to introduce myself. I think I haven't done that. I'm Sherman. I'm actually the creator and founder of Online Lab Series itself, um, which is a learning platform all right, that I've created to provide free online education as well as skills training for, um, for hopefully, you know, thousands of people around the world and children and families, you know, who are unable to pay for their children's education um, or to send them to schools elsewhere. So this online access um, means that people like you, you know, would actually have the opportunity to learn something wherever you are, right? Wherever you are around the world right now. Right, so of course, you know, um, with that, you know, what do I want to say? I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, I want to, let, okay, let, let's get into the micro bit itself, right? So uh, what you see here, right, this is actually the um, micro bit bot, right? We call it a development bot, but um, normally short term, I, I, I mean, in, in a shorter term, easier to Name it, I will just call it a micro bit bot. Oh, yeah, just call it micro bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all right, so this micro bit is kind of like a mini, mini version of a computer. Right? Obviously, it's not a computer, right? It, it, it can't really do what a computer does, but um, it has a lot of things on this little tiny bot that allows you to control sensors, it allows you to control. Um, devices that can read um, your environment, right? gather information about your environment. So, um, for example, you know, you might have a guitar at home, you have an electric guitar, and you want to use microbit to convert sounds into lights, right? Like dancing lights. You can do that. So, there will be a sound sensor, for example, that is being attached to the microbit board. All right, and then it will be able to read those sounds and then convert them into the lights that you want to play, the LED lights that you want to display and, and, and you know, do a rock and roll show, right? So, and on top of that, you can do a lot of things. You can control the lights in the room. You can control, um, you know, so many things, right? There's so many things that you can do with it that sometimes I feel like, you know, where do I start, you know? Um, of course, you know, you can do robots, right? Um, I am actually speaking to uh, brands like uh, Citronic as well as 
uh, is this binary box. So I saw their uh, robot kits, their robotic kits on their website, and I thought that you know it's quite interesting. But the thing is this: during this um, micro bit course, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase a lot of different project ideas. Right, I'm going to take some of the ideas that some of the products that are already available, showcase that. But on top of that, you know, what I want to do is objectively is to move forward from there and then look at a lot of other different ideas as well. All right, so um, here with this micro bit, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the camera and I'm just going to shine, uh, show the micro bit itself. Okay, so let me see. Okay, I'm going to try and I'm using a webcam, so on the tripod, so you know, sometimes. Okay, so from here you can see the micro bit board. Okay, so here what you can see is that this is considered the bottom side of the bot, all right? So there are two sides. One is this is the top side of the bot, all right? And this is bottom. Okay, so on the bottom side, you're gonna see quite a number of things, all right? What I love about Microbit, as you can notice, is that they've labeled everything, right? So um, especially if you are brand new to this product, you know, it gives you a very good layout of where are the components on this bot. So I'm going to start from top left, your left, to right, and then I'm going to go down and never talk about a lot of things that are available on this bot itself. Right, so the very first thing you see here, right, this is actually the processor. So the processor is unlike, you know, your laptop or your PC processors. Um, this is not, this is not something that you can store gigabytes of information or even megabytes of information. Um, but there is enough memory in this bot for you to run some of the most complex uh, project ideas that you can think of uh, to build with a micro bit. So not to go into the technical details because some of you are probably going to get confused by it. And all you need to know is that this is where you're going to store um, your program, and this is where it's going to execute your program, all right, um, and do all the processing and, and so on. So moving towards the right, here this is the USB cable that you plug into your computer. You have the reset button. So this reset button basically will um, reset the microbit port um, to the default state. Not, not its original factory default state, but rather if you have installed a program, you see when you press this, it just restarts the program. And then over here is the battery uh, connector. Right, so if you have a uh, lithium ion battery pad, you know, you can actually connect to this and it can be powered off by that. Um, then moving down, right over here, we have the compass. Right, so the compass is basically a magnetic compass. Um, it basically needs the magnetic field around it and it means you know west, north, south, east, west. And also another thing that you can use this um, compass to do is a metal detector because it detects magnetic fields. Right? Now next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at is um, over here. Oh hang on, I need something right at the top. Okay, so there's this little um, piece over here. 
We call it BLE. BLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. Now, what is this BLE? It's basically a sort of an antenna. Right? So if you are doing robotics, you know, you have multiple um, micro bit bots. And I'm going to showcase and talk about this later on during the courses, the course itself. And uh, you will know, you will understand that two micro bit bots can actually talk to each other over this um, BLE uh, capability, right? Uh, yeah, so all right, let's move on. Um, I kind of forgot what this is actually. All right, I'll probably have to get back to you on this. Probably in the next session, I'll find out what this is. Okay, so let's go down to the next thing. Uh, here, right at the bottom, we have the accelerometer. What the accelerometer does is that it measures the axis of this bot. Right, if you have studied mathematics, if you learn graphs, you know that um, there are three different axes. All right, so those three different axes, we have X, we have Y, we have uh, Z. So uh, those three axes. So when the micro bit bot is moving, you know, usually we do this, right? You put it level down. This is the at the zero, right? So at zero is the the at zero basically, you know, yeah, it's not moving. It's still so you can um, you know move left and right and up and down. So the accelerometer will actually be able to detect. Um, what's the distance of movement, right? Okay, and then the next thing that uh, we want to talk about is this thing over here, right? What is this? This is actually the pins, all right? So the connectors, the plugs, you can call it, because of the holes and how they were designed. So yeah, the power plugs. So these plugs and the small little pins in between they allow you to sort of interface and connect to multiple components externally. All right, so you can control LEDs, you can control um, motors, you can control temperature sensors, you, know, you can read the readings and so on. So buttons, you can detect button press and all, all sorts of things. So when you do that, you know, you'll be able to and perform certain actions by sending a voltage, a signal to one of these things. All right, so another thing you can take note is that from the left to the right, right, these are what we call the digital pins. These pins, basically, they are also touch capable. So for example, if I want to perform a certain touch action to light up the LEDs or to show an image, what I do is I can put one finger on ground and another finger for another hand on one of the plugs, one of the pins, all right? Now here we have the voltage plug. These are three volts uh, voltage plug. So um, some devices, if you have worked with other electronics, if you did, um, then you'll know that some devices output five volts, but the micro bit itself, it, it outputs three volts. All right, this is a voltage source. All right, so you can power your electronic components. Of course, then on this um, side of the micro bit bar, what do we have? We have two push buttons. All right, and then in the center, we have this five by five uh, LED display. All right, so it might seem like uh, you know this display can be compared to the monitor screen or the screen of your mobile phone. You know, but with 25 LEDs, honestly, you can actually display quite, quite a fair bit of information. Um, yeah. All right. So with that, um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we will be using during this course itself. I'm just going to adjust the camera. Okay, so this is actually the 
DBC Microbit Starter Kit on Electrix. So Electrix is actually one of our friend sponsors. Um, so yeah, I actually got this kit from them. It's one of the first few kits that they gave me. They have given me, right? So in this kit itself, there is a menu, the user guidebook, which is fairly good, um, very well uh, designed, in fact, actually, very well written. All right, so I would recommend getting this kit because during this course, all right, during this course, we are going to touch on some of the concepts from this uh, starter kit guide. Right, of course, we're going to make some modifications and we're going to do something interesting more than just what is available. All right. So then inside, we have a lot of other different components as well. Um, honestly, this is one of the most complete uh, micro bit kits I've actually interacted with so far. So, yeah, they are really good, uh, really worth the buck. In fact, um, if you have found information about this kit, um, through the blog article on our website. It's also in the description below. So you can check that out. Right. So there are a bunch of electronic components. Um, you have like resistors, right? You have potentiometer, RGB, RED, uh, patterns. Uh, there's this, uh, one moment I can't remember. But yeah, it's a push switch, I think. Uh, and then we have transistors. Then you have blue, yellow, red, green LEDs. Um, yeah, there's another transistor here. So there are two different kinds of transistors: um, diodes, uh, photoresistors, uh, and passive buzzer. Uh, is it no active buzzer? All right. So all of these different components are available in the kit. Right. And then on top of that, you know, you you'll be given the breadboard. All right, as well as the H connector, you will have the servo motor, you will have the uh, new pixel uh, LEDs, and then there's the low battery pack that you can put in your batteries, all right, to Double A batteries, I think. Yeah, yeah, double A. Okay, and then uh, we can plug this end into the micro bit box. All right, so within the kit itself, um, there are going to be jumper wires that we'll be using. Um, there are also some computer out clips that will, be, will come in handy, especially when you want to connect it to the top pins that right, are available on the micro bit box itself. All right, so please get these kits if you actually want to follow along with the live sessions. Now, honestly, this is, a, this is meant to be an interactive course, you know, so it's not like I'm the one talking and you're the one listening. So when you're watching the live sessions, you can always ask questions. Um, if you're not sure about certain things and you want to know more about certain ideas and, and you know, certain components, any sort of questions, all right? So with regards to the STEM online courses, I always have a rule, a very simple rule. No questions are considered stupid questions. So if you want to ask, just ask. There will be no judgment. All right? So of course, you know, um, a lot of things that I know about these products, a lot of things that I know about electronics, I sort of studied them myself as well over the years. So I actually don't have a degree in uh, electrical engineering, by the way, but I am considered a STEM enthusiast as well as a STEM influencer because of my passion in, in all these kinds of products, right? So, so the next thing that uh, we are going to go through as well is the um, inventor's kit by Electronic, 
Yes. Okay, so this is the Adventist kit by Kitronic. Um, I actually come across the kit online when doing research. And I realized that, hey, you know what? I've never really used the products before. So I really wanted to just check it out and, and find out um, whether or not this kit is uh, really that good. You know, I, I've heard reviews about them. I've read reviews about them. But um, I like. I wanted to check it out myself. And if it was good, you know, I wanted to use it with this online course as well as the quote with my COVID course that's starting on Sunday. So I reached out to them. They were very kind, you know, almost immediately. Mark, the guy, uh, he, he actually almost immediately just said yes, and, and the kid was on his way. And within the same group, I actually received, received it. So, um, yeah, so I, in fact, I actually wrote a review about this uh, kit as well. I've gone through all the um, experiments in the, in the tutorial book. And I wrote my review. So uh, if you're interested, you know, you can do a search of. Uh, let's go to the Facebook page here. And you'll be able to take a read at what I've created, all right? So, yeah, all right. So they have, um, okay, firstly, I have to say that what I like about this kit is that though they do not have as much parts and components in comparison to the electric starter kits, starter kit, but in terms of the experiments and the lessons in the book itself, the content and what you can learn. I see that, you know, it's really worth it. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, I, I think that this kit is a lot more suitable for someone that is not new to Microbit. And, you know, they are thinking of doing a transition kind of, you want to transit from basic right, JavaScript blocks to uh, learning about JavaScript programming. And of course, you know, in the, course that is starting on Sunday, I won't be using um, JavaScript, the coding JavaScript, because I think that for beginners is people who are beginning to learn programming, it's a little bit more complicated. All right, so I chose MicroPython instead because Python, the language is cleaner, is much easier to learn. But that's the reason why. So anyway, um, please get a kid. All right, please order it from their website. I am actually trying to speak with them about, you know, doing a possible discount code for you guys um, so that, you know, if you're watching this video, if you're watching it live, you know, perhaps on Sunday or in next week's sessions, um, you know, you'll be able to get the code, the discount code, and get the kids online. And, you know, you'll be able to follow along, even though you're at home. Um, if you are in school, after school, you stay back in your class with the classmates, and a few of you can actually watch me online and you know to follow along and learn as well. All right, so uh, that is something that you can do. Right. So you can see that I literally um, highlighted, I, I went through all the exercises, um, and I've also gave my feedback, very honest review on the Total Nuts uh, production Facebook page. So anyway, yeah, that is that. That is my personal Facebook page, by the way. Um, and yeah, you know, you're gonna have the H connector. You're gonna have the base plate, and then you have the red box. And you're gonna have this little fan, DC motor. Um, you're gonna get the saw this um, red box. So let's grab about wires. Oh yeah, I got kind of tight. Uh, there are actually a bunch of other um, breadboard wires that you see in my kit, but 
Um, one thing that you should take note is that um, their current kit, the one that they sent to me, um, actually doesn't have enough um, male to female um, solderless breadboard wires. So I've already given that a feedback in my review. I hope that you know when by the time you order the kits, they will actually provide more of this because during the tutorial, you know, going through the tutorial, I did realize that um, that wasn't enough. So I hope that they have rectified that because if you were to buy the kit and that isn't enough, then, you know, it's gonna be a challenge for you. Yeah. But uh, you know, you can always buy your own online, it's really cheap. Um, yeah, uh, if, if your parents are controlling your pocket money, just tell them. <laughs> tell them that Sherman says you need to buy additional um, solderless breadboard wires. All right, so there are other things um, within the kit itself. There's potential meter, resistors, um, there's LEDs, buzzers, uh, capacitor. Uh, transistor, yeah. Um, they do have the what is that? They have a photo resistor. Oh, where is it? Yeah, they have a photo resistor. Okay, um, but just to be honest, the photo resistors, the leads are quite flimsy. So when you're trying to push them into the breadboard itself, uh, the breadboard, the holes in between, sometimes the clips are very tight because they're new. Um, so yeah, you will need to, I will share some tri tricks and tips with you when you get the kit and when you start doing the electronics in the next week. So like for example, sometimes um, the, the pin holes, all right, if you look at the breadboard, I'm going to just move over. All right, so if you look at the breadboard itself, sometimes some of the holes, they are so new that, yeah, it's a bit hard to put something inside. So what I do is I will usually use a solderless breadboard wire and then I will plug it into the hole and I'll just give it a little bit of wiggle, right? So by doing this little wiggle, wiggling around, uh, what it does is that it loosens up the clip so that it's much easier for you to uh, put in whatever you want to put in, like a resistors and, and so on. All right, so yeah, that is actually a tip, right? Something that I learned that you can do on your own. Um, and now, of course, you know, resistors, and I will also share some tips with you about the resistors as well. If you notice, the resistors that I have created, um, they fit quite nicely on the breadboard. Why is that so? Because, because I got OCD. Okay. All right, so um, let me pick up my plastic ruler here. So if you were to look at the leads, right? So what I did is I need my leads roughly um, one cm, right? So let me see. Right. So what I've done is that I've actually made the leads roughly 1 cm in length um, so that they actually fit quite nicely onto the breadboard. And then in between um, the leads and the resistor itself, I leave about 5 mm. So in total on each side, you know, you can keep about 1.5 cm. And then they'll fit very nicely onto the breadboard. Right. So, and of course, you know, by doing that, it will really help you to um, sort of place the other components on the breadboard much easily, right? Much easier. So yeah. Okay, so this is actually the Keytronic kit by 
yeah, there's the impact of the skip file to trauma. All right, so with that, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close this. And I'm going to give you a quick rundown, a quick introduction to the make code interface. So just give me a second while I put up the screen. Okay, so what we see here is the uh, make code user interface. Um, for the purpose of this course, you know, we will not be doing any programming. So a lot of things that you want to do, um, a lot of things that we are going to do together is going to be, can be done within this interface itself. You will notice that um, there are a couple of, there are two options here. One is the JavaScript coding, which we will not be, which I will not be teaching in this course. Perhaps in the future I will actually do it, but um, we are going to use blocks in this case, All right? So we are going to start from uh, left to right, like what we used to do, right, with the bot itself earlier. From the left here, you have this projects menu. So when you click on the projects menu, it basically shows you all the projects you have created before. So you can see here, I actually have the experiments that I've been working on with the inventor's kit. I also have um, other uh, microbit projects and tutorials that I've done using the electric starter kit. Okay, so here, basically, when you first start, what you do is you go to projects, then you select a new project. If, obviously, you know, if you have done project before, this is your first one. So again, every time you finish project, if you want to start a new one, right, you will come here and you select new project. Okay. And of course, you know, if you have a project that is uh, that some some of your friends have created, you know, you're sharing with each other, you can actually import your project here as well. So don't worry if you don't understand this uh, very well. During the course itself, we are going to keep reiterating this. We're going to keep going over this again and again. So by the time you are halfway through the course, you know, some of these things is going to be quite you know, easy to remember for you, right? Okay, so that, oh yes. In your own time, if you are interested to um, try different things. Uh, you know, there are a lot of examples that comes with the make code interface. Um, and basically you can load, load these projects out and keep run, you know, you just hit download and it will be downloaded into the method bit box itself and you can start playing with it, All right? And so back here, you also have the option to share you know, your project, right? There's also a settings option, right? so you can edit the settings for your, so for example, let's microbit project. Okay, so apart from that, you can also add package. Right, this is one way to add package, but there is also another way to do it. And I'll talk about it in a moment. You can delete the project if you want. Um, there's an option to switch the user interface. You know, there are two options. One is this light interface, which I would recommend. All right, sticking to this. Um, of course, you know, if you are interested to try out, there's a the dark interface, but honestly, I don't like the dark interface. Yeah, it's just kind of ugly. I don't, I don't know why they have this dark interface. Okay, so moving here down, right, to the main screen. This is the simulator, right? 
when you start writing your project, when you start putting your blocks together, um, you'll be able to see it running in this simulator. Right, so you can play sounds, you can, uh, I think there is slow motion. Hmm. Oh yeah, I mean, now that I'm talking about this, yeah, yeah, this slow motion, some of the two tape didn't appear. Right, and then you can, uh, just refresh the project, I believe, yeah, refresh or restart the project. All right, we start the simulator. So anyway, um, since we are seeing this, I uh, will just talk a little bit about this. Um, Make code is created by Microsoft, by the guys at Microsoft, and they actually have this beta interface. But um, I recently did a review about the beta interface, and I put it on social media, and I sort of shared with everyone about how um, it's not exactly user friendly at the moment. So Honestly, I, I feel that um, I won't touch that, I won't go into that. But you can explore it in your own time, by your own means. Right? But um, honestly, you know, in terms of education and so on, I won't be using that interface. So we are, we are going to follow by using this interface. And I would recommend that you use this interface, unless you know, you're know you familiar, you're already familiar with this interface and you want to try out the beta version while you're following along with my lab sessions, that's fine as well, right? So here, over here, this is what we call the toolbox, right? So in this toolbox, you will have the option to select different categories of blocks. We call it blocks because, yeah, basically these are like blocks. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, a piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Right. So you have stuff like uh, basic showing LEDs, uh, showing a string, an icon, displaying a number. You can pause the display, uh, pause whatever you're doing. Right. Um, there's inputs. So these inputs are actually uh, talking about patterns or any form of interaction movement that you have you know, with the micro bit itself, so you can detect that. Because there are a lot more, right? So we're going to work with all of these different things over the next couple of weeks. And by the time we're done with this course, you know, you actually be very familiar with how to build a complex uh, micro bit project. Right, so music, you know, you can actually create tunes and, and melodies and, and play music as well. Um, the LEDs, you plot, like so uh, you can do games as well, all right? So over here, if you look at the games, you know, you can actually create sprites. So sprite is basically like, a, it's just like, imagine an icon or a image. Right, but in this case, it's actually the LED, right? That you saw earlier on the display. So you can determine uh, like which X and Y, all right? So from top to bottom, um, basically X is X is across, is the rows, and then uh, Y is the columns. Okay. Majors, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do. Pins. So these pins is when we use the edge connector, you can actually expand the micro bit board out for easier um, interfacing with different sensors, different components, and so on. Yeah. This serial communication, not to confuse you, is really just for uh, reading um, inputs from uh, for example, in the USB interface, when you want to interact from your computer with the microbit port and get it to do certain things, um, this is where you will do that. So we will touch on this as well. Right, and then control, so you can do more complex stuff here as well. So we will go through all of this. Uh, I'm not going to go into it um, here. 
And another thing that is very, very useful uh, in Microbit itself is the ability to create functions, right? So functions are basically um, small little um, process, processes that you can create, custom process. So you can call a function to um, do a multiplication of numbers, right? Um, time table, so maybe you pass in a Factor saying I want to do the time table. I want to display all the time table numbers of four, and then uh, the fun within the function itself, it would actually um, do all the calculations for you, do all the processing for you. Then, all right. So this is basically it, the most basic stuff. Um, so for some of you that are watching this, you probably do not have a microbit right now. This is the first session, so don't worry about it. Um, in fact, you know, with this simulator here, sometimes you do, you may not need a microbit bot in order to learn microbit, right? Which is why I think it's really cool about it. Um, so, but of course, you know, there are things that we are going to need. It's good to have the physical microbit bot. So, um, yeah, it's good to have one. Honestly, it's good to have one. So, and it doesn't cost a lot, really, right? So, um, get one, all right, get the kids. Um, I'll try to get the discount codes for you guys, right? And I will only share the discount code um, in the live session on Sunday, um, if, they, if I get the discount code before Sunday, uh, Sunday session, or next weekend, right? So, when you tune in live, um, hopefully, I will have a discount code I can share with you. No promises there. And then, yeah, you know, you, you get to get some discounts for whatever you buy. And over the next few weeks and next few months, as the cost progresses, you know, you're going to use those kits. And then any other um, materials that we are using, you know, um, I will let you know, I will let you guys know ahead of time so you have time to actually uh, get it. Maybe you want to put aside your pocket money. Um, to get those uh, kids all right, to follow along as well. So uh, yeah, that's the purpose of it. So let me just switch the camera over. All right, so with that, um, thank you very much for watching this session, guys. I think that, you know, I hope that you actually learned something um, and understood a little bit more about the microbit hardware. All right, so um, honestly, I look forward to um, starting off with working with Microbit and the kids um, next week, next weekend. So hopefully by then, some of you will actually have gotten your kids. Um, but then again, like I say, you know, if you are able to get your kid or get your hands on those kids um, next week, don't worry. You know, there is the online simulator. We will be making use of the online simulator every now and then as well. So, um, so you you probably have a couple of weeks to really get your hands on both kits you know, that I've showed earlier. All right. So again, you know, what are those two kits? Uh, you have the um, Inventors kit for BBC Microbit uh, Tronic. So uh, do make sure to check out the website, right? Their website to find out about the pricing. Okay. The other one, all right, is the starter kit um, for BBC Microbit by Electrix. So likewise, you know, um, the link is in the blog article. So check it out, all right, and get yours from them, all right? So yeah, with that, um, I'm going to end my session here. If you find that this session is helpful, you find the information is helpful and useful to you, and you are interested in learning more about Microbit, do like my video. Um, and if you find that, you know, there are certain things that you would like me to talk about um, during the course itself, there are certain things that you're interested to learn, please share it in the comments below. All right. Now, of course, you know, um, do share this link and this video, this session with your friends on social media, on Facebook, um, and get them to know about this um, blogs with Microbit um, online STEM course. All right. So yeah, with that, um, I'll end this section here.
thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys uh, next week. And if you're interested in the code with Microbit session on Sunday, I'll talk to you guys on Sunday. Bye.